Hello everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to go over the environment light mixer. So what the environment light mixer is, is it's actually just a window or tool um, to basically use alongside your environment and it can be really helpful just to organize your lighting a little bit more, um, keep things just yeah orderly and then uh, save some time as well with uh, your workflow and just uh, from not having to search through the outliner and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I wanted to start here in the scene. As you notice, I don't really have any lighting besides a single point light that I have in the middle. And I actually want to uh, set up our lighting with the environment light mixer and kind of go from there. So I'm going to start by deleting this light and then I'm going to go up to window uh, here in Unreal Engine 5 and click on the environment light mixer tab. So what we're going to get now is we have this little window popped up uh, and you can see that yeah it says in the environment light mixer we're getting a lot of the features that uh, basically what we need to set up some basic lighting inside of uh, Unreal Engine 5 and really get our environment started. Uh, now of course like if you start with some of the starter content or even like one of the uh, like starter uh, environments with the the lighting and everything set up some of this is already kind of resolved for you uh, but if you are wanting to delete some of that and actually just start from a, uh, a really more organized I guess setup uh, this can be useful as a tool. Uh, now what we can do here is we have our skylight, our atmospheric light, um, volumetric clouds, height fog, and basically add what we want to. Um, what I want to do first is actually start with an atmospheric light, also known as a directional light uh, inside of Unreal. So going to click that there and we'll see already in our scene that we have a directional light now added. Uh, it'll also pop up over here in the outliner. Uh, you can see it named uh, directional light 7 and uh, I can pull it up and there it is. So. I'm going to just drag it over here so it's a little bit easier to rotate and all. Uh, that way we get those controls uh, just for directionality of the lighting and everything. Um, and then if you look over here, of course, there is a slight difference between the directional light details here. Um, it's a pretty long tab of a lot of stuff and the details here. Uh, and the reason why is this is basically just giving you the the priority stuff the the really important stuff for if we're you know working on lighting and all um, that's what it's giving you and so what you'll notice is this little drop down tab here named minimal uh, and that's basically telling you this is uh, the amount of details that is uh, being shown um, so if I change this, it'll go to normal mode. And so now we'll see that this is starting to look a lot more uh, close to each other between this details panel and this details panel. Uh, now we can take that a step further and there is normal plus advanced as well. So I can click this and you can see that it's got all of the advanced tabs and everything. Also, uh, that way if we have a lot of the features and yeah, settings that we want to um, work with we can open them up and have them all in the light mixer uh, but of course we only have a single light in here and this is already pretty long to drag so that's why they uh, they offer the minimal and the normal modes um, I'm gonna run with minimal for right now and if we need something additionally uh, I will of course add that or change it over to the, the normal mode so um, now that we have a directional light though I want to also add a skylight to our scene um, that's pretty nice because it, yeah, just really quick. Uh, and then I'm going to do a fog and then let's say I'm going to do a sky atmosphere as well. Uh, if I wanted to, I could add the clouds, but I think right now I just want the blue skies. Uh, that'll be better for our scene. Um, and yeah, now since we are set to minimal, uh, we can actually see, uh, all four of these objects pretty easily. And this is something that like, of course I could, uh, like dock over here with the details panel and just like switch it over if I wanted to. Um, but I personally, I think it's uh, pretty nice to like actually maybe have on a, another monitor or so, or even just off to the side of the, uh, the main like viewport and everything here. Uh, that way you can kind of look over there. And if you want to do a really simple, quick change, it's something that you can yeah easily type in. Um, but with that, I wanted to, yeah, just really quickly block out some lighting in here, uh, maybe find a lighting scenario that we'd like, 
uh, bring this down a little bit and you know, go over maybe I want something along these lines no there we go yeah so we have some shapes going on uh, these two different faces are a little bit uh, they're contrasting and all, so I think, yeah, that's working nicely. Uh, additionally, I think the, the bounce, since everything's white right now, it's super intense. So I'll probably need to turn that down a little bit, um, because, uh, with the, uh, yeah, the lumen and everything and the indirect lighting intensity, uh, the, the bright stuff's going to bounce immensely. So, uh, if I yeah, even pull in a different color or something, um, you'll notice that it'll pretty easily, let me, uh, actually, I want to make a material real quick just to give an example of what I mean by that and going to throw on a super simple, let's say blue, uh, and that's something that's you know, somewhat pleasing to bounce with. I'm going to hit apply and it is now working and so i'm going to throw this on the uh, wall here so you can see that the blue is actually coming off of the wall uh, and if i were to bump this up even further uh, you're going to get more of that um, but yeah uh, we have some bounce there um, but the the reason why the white is making a lot of the other areas glow is because of that reflection so uh, we can see that if I actually put it here in the, in the sunlight and have that bounce, um, this area here is getting a pretty decent amount of blue um, hitting. Uh, and it's super pleasing to have that, but uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I am uh, changing the uh, intensity of the indirect lighting. So it's a little bit of a tangent, but I uh, wanted to explain that. So. We have this though, and let's say that I wanted to also go down here and um, now I, I wish that I had my uh, temperature actually, because I think that's something that's pretty nice, you know, maybe playing around with the temperature of the, uh, the, the sunlight that we have. And so I'm going to switch this from minimal to normal, and now we have our temperature. Um, and so now I can set this to 5,500 if I wanted to get a little bit warmer uh, lighting coming in. Um, and that's the nice thing. Now I can drop off of that and it's back to the directional light. Um, so really just keeping the stuff that's main priority and uh, only bringing out the, you know, super more detailed stuff uh, when necessary. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, I can come down here, bump up my skylight as well uh, let's say that's looking all right uh, with that intensity we're getting some nice blues and all um, then sky atmosphere uh, looking over here not going to play with the sky too much but uh, let's say that we add a little bit more fog in here so i'm going to just do a one right now uh, it's a little bit exaggerated of course but i think that's a good starter and yeah we can see okay this isn't doing too bad maybe some fall off uh, to where it's a little bit lower um, don't want to have it start too far back kind of like it being in the the foreground as well um, and that's not looking half bad I think if we yeah keep that around um, it can give a, a pretty nice like just let me switch this over yeah, I think like just looking at the difference between those two, it's just giving a little bit more fill and uh, uh, some more atmosphere to the overall like air in the space. Uh, and so I think that's pretty pleasing to add there. Um, but overall, we have lighting set up now um, just using the environment light mixer. And we have all of our features that we really need. Yeah, just to do that. Of course, there's more things like adding other lights and all if we wanted to, um, but in reality, like these are the essentials to uh, starting like a, a simple exterior environment like this. But yeah, uh, besides that, uh, that's about it with the environment light mixer. It's a uh, pretty simple and easy to use. Um, but I think what's nice about it is it definitely can help you streamline uh, just your workflow 
and uh, actually getting things a little bit more organized to where uh, you're not having to click through the outliner nonstop, try to find all the details and scroll down. I uh, can, you know, clean things up a little bit more with the minimal view uh, mode and uh, just allow you to focus on what's necessity, especially when you're doing iteration with lighting and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video and I will see you next time.